the one you will be waiting for. That's right. Saudi Arabia. That's right. I mean, it's obvious, isn't it, really? If you're new around here, I've been sent Ben Sports News around the world to cover the World Cup on behalf of One Football for Dr. Benji FM. This week, we're focusing on Saudi Arabia in Group A. So, let's get to it. Managed by Spaniard Juan Antonio Pizzi, who some might remember as former Valencia and Chile manager, took over in November last year after Bert Van Marwijk guided them to Russia. And some feel Saudi Arabia might be something of a surprise package in Group A. In qualifying, they only finished a point behind Japan in the six-team group that also had Australia, the UAE, Iraq and Thailand, the highlight of which was a 1-0 win over Japan late in the group stages to secure their place in Russia. Saudi Arabia have a team largely made up of home station players. Of the 28 called up in the preliminary squad, only three play outside Saudi Arabia in Spain. We expect Pizzi to play a 4-2-3-1 system which will likely pack the midfield of bodies to restrict their opponents from the attacks, though they're attacking trio themselves of Salam al Dazari, Yaya al Shari, and fan favourite Faha al Mahawalwad could cause problems in a soft group A. If you're from Saudi Arabia, I can only apologise for those pronunciations. This is their first World Cup appearance in 12 years. While progression won't be easy, they might just surprise you in Russia. Look out for them, and to follow their progress, this is how you can do it. So, once downloaded on iOS and Android, go down to the following tab on the OneFootball app, find the World Cup section under following, and then you'll find all of the match days. Luckily, from that screen, you can go to Saudi Arabia and then follow their progress throughout the tournament. Of course, they kick off the tournament against Russia on the opening day, and then you'll get all the latest news for Saudi Arabia. If you want to check out what else is going on in the tournament, depending on which match day, group stage, or whatever you want to find out, you can do, and all the latest news will be straight to your phone as it happens. There you are, download it. I wouldn't tell you about it if it wasn't good, and remember to check out the playlist in the description to follow up on the other groups with the other creators involved. And there we go then, Saudi Arabia might spring a surprise. Didn't see that coming, did you? That's a surprise in itself. I'll, there's only one more of these. See you, see you next time, we'll be in Uruguay. Ooh. Have you have you packed the muzzle? Have you have you? Because we might you never know. Not bad, Benny boy. Not bad. I'm just taking a moment really to have a look at the uh, the records. We've got one game today coming up. Of course, if you missed last episode. Watch that quickly. And now welcome back. Uh, so let's talk about the progression of Thames. So far, so good. Promotion to League One is secure. Of course, that is still the Vanarama National uh, League. I was looking through a few things. And our, our rise to success is actually more impressive than I first realised. And I'm going to show you why. I was having a little look around and I couldn't actually figure out to what... Like, Carlisle doesn't make sense to me. The fact that they've, they've had such a meteoric rise. I couldn't figure out why or how until I looked at Landmarks. And then realised they got a guy come in called Mark Moore, and he seems to be the key. And by that, I mean, if you look at the contracts of some of the players, you've got guys like Tariq Bartlett, who are on five and a half grand as a backup. Like, that's that's a pretty good spot to be in. They've got a key player there, uh, Dominic Lucchetti, who, again, is on three and a half grand. We, we don't have players on... I'll show you. When you go to stats and then go to team details, uh, you can see the salary per annual. You'll notice there, Carlisle at three million pounds. They're spending a million more on, on their team. You'll notice that that's the top 18 there. We're not in it. We are 23rd, though. We're not quite bottom. Villa Ricky just below us. Um, but yeah, we we spend £856,000 a year on our team. Uh, still, still in debt, despite all of that. And I just thought it was interesting to see and notice that that was the case. In terms of attendance figures as well, in terms of average attendance, you can never guess who's bottom with, with 1,200. I mean, it's an improvement, folks, but... Man, we are we are so far off the pace in terms of every other team, and I'm a little bit worried that this sort of thing is going to impact massively when we go to these high divisions. Like, how many fans are we actually going to have? Like, pe more people are always going to watch this series than support Thames in the ground. That's that's a mad thing to have with a with a YouTube save. Even when we're in the Premier League, I can't see us having a big attendance. I just thought it was interesting. Anyway, let's uh, let's head over to today's game. I will say, average possession. <laughs> There we are, top of the tree. So since we last met, just the one game played, it was against South Shields, and it was a 3-1. Uh, I tweeted a picture of this out, but I've got to show you it as well. This Pat Rogers goal in three dimensions is a treat. I feel like leaving League 2, we're almost saying goodbye to the lower leagues. I know League 2 are technically uh, a league side, but I think, as we've seen now, the comparison between the, 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 the sort of League 2 and the conference... Not that different. Allow me just to slow this down for you because it needs a slow motion replay. So as the ball is knocked forward, you can see Duffy, the South Shields defender. He's got everything under. He's cool. He's calm. He's composed. And then their goalkeeper decides to just slide in on him. He goes down. Duffy goes down. He dives over him. 
it's, it's Pat Rogers, and I loved that. That was one of my favourite goals scored in the whole series. If that had happened in an actual episode, I don't know what I'd have done with myself. Anyway, uh, Northampton come today then, and I've, I mentioned it last episode, but we can't finish anywhere other than second. Uh, but I thought I'd give you a final game, and then we'll talk through some of the stats and see who was top goal scorers, assist makers, pass completion, all sorts of business. So we'll go through that in just a moment. But first things first, running through the team for today's game. Now, knowing there's nothing at stake today, I am going to be a sentimental little Benjamin, and uh, Colton's going to come out to this right hand side he's going to become a winger and he's then going to be replaced by Christy Clark Slocum who has spent a long time at this team uh, hasn't yet featured in League 2 despite featuring in every other division and I want to see how he does today uh, it was probably a little bit harsh that he was replaced basically we changed the system and then and that changed everything but um, yeah we're going to give him a game out there on that side Rogers is going to come out to this left hand side he can do it sort of he's left footed as well so it does make sense uh, his pace I think he'll be fine with that and then also that up top on his own uh, the rest of the team is as you remember it Fitzpatrick in goal Ashley Malt Murray Holness Welsh Harris, Collier and Foster. There's a little bit of discussion to whether I should bring someone else in maybe to play in here. Mm, let's keep it as is. There's a few players that might have their final game for us today, which is a bit of a shame, but um, all in all, I think this is the best lineup for the for the game played. So Northampton coming up, our final league game of the season to secure things. Let's see if we can go out with a bang. And I think we're all hoping for some sort of impact from Christy Clark Slocum. I think maybe an assist for Otadal, the old sort of campaigners, giving it to the new breed. And that'd be nice. As we come out at the Riverbank for the final time, I think that the stadium will look exactly the same as this. Um, it looks quite majestic there, doesn't it? I think the stadium will look exactly like that for next year as well. I don't think there's any changes required as we're going to watch this game in slow mo. We're not going to. I'll speed it up. And we're going to head back over to 2D because that's my home. <laughs> So, the Carlisle Thames journey next uh, season is set to be very exciting as Northampton, with the first chance of the game, head on goal, and I've lost my match stats. I had to hide them for the for the, the funny goal. Carlisle are tuning up already, uh, not messing about. I really want Christy Clark Slocum to do something. I really want him to do something. Problem is, in, th like, in, in history, he's always needed Bright and Awusu with him, so... We'll see if we make any changes come the second half. All right, we're we're going. We're going. It's, it's half time. It's nil nil. Northampton are particularly good. We're ch we're going to change a couple of personnel here. Uh, Clark Slocum staying out there. Pat Rogers is going to come off a of bright, and then we're going to put a Wooster up top, and then Bright's going to play in behind. I'm going to bring Harris slightly further forward and uh, allow Bright to attack in this attacking playmaker role. That he saw. He was the first guy really to play that role at all. So let's see how he does. Awus is going to be up top as the advanced forward on this occasion. Come on then, boys. Do something magical for me in these late stages. If you can't be a little bit sentimental with football manager, then when can you be a little bit sentimental? This is, this is what this game's about. You know, these boys have been here for a long time. Awus has been... Awus not so much, actually, but Brighton and Clark Slocum have had major impacts on the team over the last few years. And uh, this year, I haven't featured so much, so let's give my run out. I'm getting soft in my old age, you know, my old managerial age. Question is, they're not that threatening as uh, I've got a chance. Bright plays it back to Welsh. And finally, an opportunity perhaps. Clark Slocum can't quite get under it. Him and Ashley Malt. Never really got the opportunity to form a partnership, actually. Strange, isn't it? Considering we're quite dominant on that side. As Clark Slocum's ball in to a Wusu. And I'll tell you what, viewers. I called it. I said they can't play without each other. And there it is. Assisted by Christy Clark Slocum. Scored by Mohamed Wusu. And that's what we came to see. And I'm so pleased it's happened. Clark Slocum out of that side. Oh, I was, I'm delighted. Ball played in. Wusu there to finish it off. 1-0, half an hour to go. Tabor's looking to finish with a bang. Collier into Bright now. Finds a Wusu and Wusu's in again. Oh, he's hit the post this time. Goes close. Carlisle are absolutely destroying Halifax over there. They've conceded quite a lot of goals recently. <laughs> Elsewhere, the promotion battle is hotting up. Brighton, uh, sorry, not Brighton, Bradford, Ebbsfleet, Crawley, uh, Tranmere may be involved as well. Even Sutton, perhaps, if results go slightly differently. And then the bottom. Oh, we're sending Northampton down. Oh, I feel a little bit guilty about it. Well, there's a chance for them. They could actually survive here. They might only need a point. What's their goal difference? The story here is Brighton. Uh, Brighton? What? My obsession with Brighton is this Northampton. <laughs> Brighton are not involved today. I don't know what's going on. Ball played here. This could be massive. Fitzpatrick, though, uh, dampens that. If the, so if they get a point, how is their goal difference? It's not enough. They're going to need to win the game, and Peterborough are going to have to lose. Uh, otherwise, we're going to send a team down. So I feel kind of guilty about it. Uh, Bright's on it. Bright! That's why. Because he's bright on. He's on the pitch. I bought bright on. Oh, I couldn't work out why we're saying Brighton. But it's because I bought bright on as Fitzpatrick saves. Madness. <laughs> I mean, I've never happened before. That's never happened before. Okay, they've had a shot on goal. It's whistled wide. And uh, it looks as if this is going to be the end of the game. Ball played forward. Uh, out towards Norris on that side. I mean, I'll tell you what, Northampton's still got a chance. They've smashed the post. Agony for Northampton. I almost want them to do it. 
a minute left in terms of season. Of course, the promotion's already wrapped up and no playoffs this time around. Still no title, though. We still haven't won a trophy as Thames manager and we can't win any of sort of the, I don't want to call them meaningless trophies in the lower leagues, but it, compared to sort of the big boy FA Cup and, and whatnot, we can't really win those. The Checker Trade Trophy, I guess, is our best bet next season. Oh, dear. Foster finds a wusu, doesn't quite make it through. And with about five seconds left to go, it looks as if it's going to end like this. Is it? Oh, there's a final chance. Northampton, can they survive? Oh, it's Patrick says no, and there we go. Full-time whistle, Thames one, and a woosu goal from a Clark Slocum delivery. That is a little smile to my face, I've got to say. Uh, if I should say, well done, lads. Good win for us. I worry that that will be Christy Clark Slocum's final appearance, unless we try and give him one a year. Uh, he's basically the new Andy Tannoy in that respect, isn't he? If you watch the Salford story, you will, you will know what I mean. And there we are then. Thames received £11,000. Ah, that's not enough. Uh, obviously, these all change come the end of the season, but we are in the favourite personnel now, alongside Arusu and Stefan Wright. Bright, Douglas, Smith, C. Foster and Liam Denan are in there as icons. People will be interested. He's doing OK at Histon. He's still bagging goals in. Of course he is. The ginger assassin. He retires after, after not even playing for Canvey Island. It's a shame. Media prediction, 20th. Jokers. Absolute jokers. So let's take a look, uh, look then. In terms of appearances, that is the list we've got. Fitzpatrick on 54 games. That may well be every single game. Uh, well, Norris played one, so actually, no, it's not every single game. It could have been 55. Uh, Andrew Murray playing 51. 50 games for, for Ashley Moult. Of course, some of these lone guys will actually leave. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them back. Uh, of course, we still have Welsh and Pat Rogers will be joining us in the league above now. Great to have them already signed. Uh, shots on target percentage. Who's the best striker? A Wusu with 65%. Looking really good. I kind of love that Clark Slocum is at the top there. Uh, Pass completion, Keon Harris, Jack Thomas, Bradley McDonnell and Simon Doherty top it. Uh, Stevie Foster not too far behind. Then Otadal came in, 82% pass completion, not too bad at all. Uh, in terms of chance creation, Bright's up there. P uh, Paul Colton just behind him, doing very, very well. Goals per 90 minutes, let's go to that one as well. Uh, I mean, that's... I'll tell you what, Alterdale, he's come in late doors for us, hasn't he? And that is quite spectacular. 20 games, 17 goals, and an average goal per game of, of nearly 90 minutes. Like, nearly goal, a goal per game, essentially. Uh, assists per 90. Clark Slocum, he's got one. I love that already. Uh, Colton with 0.4. That's not too bad. That's almost an assist every two games. Uh, key passes as well. Let's focus on that one. Uh, Bright, Colton, and Cousins is up there too, which is quite interesting. As his, again, I love it, Christy Clark Slocum. Uh, minutes, not not so important. They're sort of relation, uh, related to the, 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 the appearance mix. Uh, the appearance makes goals then let's look at this pat rogers 33 goals a phenomenal season for him scored more in this division than he did in the vanarama national and to have him back again from cardiff next year is superb stuff very very similar average rating interestingly um right let's go through a few more of these then uh, wusu with 19 him and Ozadal carrying that position obviously shared it with the wusu's injury uh, assists wise pat rogers up there again alongside paul colton uh, a quiet season from stevie foster still six goals and three assists but not quite as spectacular in terms of average ratings paul colton Colton, who up oh, doing me? Paul Colton, who signed as a four-star player, now a three-star player with the likes of uh, Otterdale coming in. Again, looks pretty decent. I think we can probably use him again next season. I hope so anyway. And uh, a few of the other boys there as well. Hopefully we'll see them next season too. A few names that might leave. Adam Dyche hasn't really featured, although been. I mean, you look at that. He's a very, mentally, he's a very, very good player. But he just didn't feature for me anywhere near enough this year. Um, we might have to sell him on, which is, was part of the reason we brought in, actually, we could make some money on him. He's 100 grand, so you never know. And uh, that, then, I think is going to bring us to the end. I'll leave you with the full league table. Let's take a look at that in all its glory. 94 points for Thames. Carlisle will lead the way, and Cambridge will also join us in the division above. It'll be w Wimbledon, Wrexham, Ebbsfleet or Bradford as well. And luckily for me, it doesn't matter. I've just noticed, by the way, that Northampton, in the last, last minute, seemed to survive. I mean, people will be interested. What happened? There was a late, like Peterborough was the game, wasn't it? So where, where is Peterborough here? Peterborough, Plymouth got a late goal, 87th minute. Oh my God, you talk about bottle jobs. Two red cards in the last five minutes for Peterborough. Oh dear. <laughs> then when Halifax go down, then Fitzpatrick, 15 uh, clean sheets. He is still a key man for the side. We'll see him again next year. And that then is going to bring us to the end. And I'll see you for more on Monday. Transfer special. We might do a, a sort of a streamed episode over the weekend or something like that. You never know. Uh, keep an eye out at Dr. Benji on Twitter for that. Uh, thank you to everyone that's bought Thames Football shirts. I can't believe we've sold over 100. That's mad, in it? So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. We love with care. Goodbye. Oh. Thank you for watching the series, folks. Thank you for the support. And, of course, do check out the players for World Football in the description. Uh, talk FCB is tomorrow, so why not?